Stop complaining about the quality of our politicians. It's your own fault. You pay peanuts, and what do you expect? I'm not going to ask you to shed any tears for the multi-millionaires who sit around the cabinet table. And I agree that a reasonable person should be able to live well on the MP's £79,000 a year. But here's the thing. We can say that people should enter public service for the love of it. But why would a brilliant deputy head teacher force her family to accept sacrifices for her own political passions? Why should young lawyers who worry about supporting their ageing parents have to tell them they can't afford the best care home because they're at Westminster doing God's work? Our self-righteousness about politicians' earnings hasn't made them more virtuous. It's made politics predominantly the province of two types of people. Those who can afford to do anything they want and those who probably couldn't get a job anywhere else. The average, grounded, sensible person is being priced out, leaving a vacuum to be filled by narcissists and incompetence. And that's killing our democracy. Gosh, that was quite punchy stuff from Trevor Phillips, Esquire. <laughs> MP, M not. No, not yet MP. And, um, Never. You, I think that's... Um, I think any person who's stood for election would take offence at what you've said, because it's not just narcissists and no-hopers who stand for Parliament, but you do have a point in that it's very expensive to stand for office. And even if you lose your seat, you spend tens of thousands of pounds if you add in all the accommodation, the travel, the expenses and the lost income of actually giving up your life for what can be five years to, nur to nurse a seat. Um, I think we should pay credit to these people for willing to make that sacrifice. It's not just the very rich, but the truth is, you're right, you do have to be well off to be able to do it because parties raise money for you to be able to stand, but they don't repay your expenses, as I discovered when I stood for the European <laughs> Parliament election and lost. But, on the other hand, the MPs actually earn quite a good whack. I don't think we're paying peanuts and getting monkeys. MP salaries have risen over the last 10 years from 64000 to 79000 That's a decent wage. Yeah, but the point I'm making, and I don't want to make this a conversation just between the two of us, because no. we're the two here who have stood for election. No. And no. Not, no, no, no. no. I, I, no. Yeah, we oh, I beg your pardon, yeah. pardon. OK. Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, I did as well. OK, yeah. there are four yeah, of us, who, there are four of us who stood for election. Yes. <laughs> We're all narcissist incompetence, aren't we? One of us who got elected, by the way. But anyway, <laughs> the point I'm really trying to make is not that the sum is trivial. I agree with that. But the point is, for the ordinary person who used to be... Um, uh, a person who could become a member of parliament, they always have a choice. And the choice isn't just about their virtue. It is, what do you say to your family? Mm -hmm. I want to make this... I want, I want to become an MP. And people might say, yeah, that's a good thing. But bear in mind, there are other calls on people's responsibilities. My, my point is simply that because we are now bearing down so heavily, both on the sum and also what MPs can earn outside, I think for the ordinary person who could become a great member of parliament, they sit and they look at their, their families is, and they make a choice. That is such and, a strong and man argument, And they're Cameron. tending to make the, the, a choice <laughs> that leaves it only to the fanatics and the rich. That's all I make, that's what I'm making. OK, let's have a look at the median household disposable income. According to the Office for National Statistics, in 2018-19, it was £29,400. An MP salary is not... You know, it's not normal. It's not a normal salary. In fact, an MP salary puts them in the top 5% of society. So it's a straw man argument to suggest that most people would look at a salary of £80,000 and go, oh, I'd love to be an MP, but that's not really enough to live on. Look, the thing that stops people getting into politics is the fact that politics is one of those elite professions, along with the media and, and the judiciary and others. It is inaccessible, partly for the reasons that you're saying, Rachel, which is that it costs so much just to stand as a candidate, never mind even win, partly because it's inaccessible in terms of straightforward access. Let me just finish, let me just finish, quickly, finish with a bad sentence. Yeah. But this idea of knowing how to be an MP, having the right connections, having the right conversations, knowing the right people that will enable that pathway to be open to you, that is something that at the moment is a very privileged pathway. But Rachel, I don't want my Member of Parliament 
who is making the most important decisions that anybody makes in this country to be an average person. I want them to be better than average. And my point is... Um, the person average in terms of income, not in no, terms of... No, in capability, knowledge, experience. And the person who has those capabilities has better choices. That's the point I'm making. If, I were, to, if we were to strip away some of the, the, the emotionally charged language from your introduction, this basic point that um, you can either uh, afford to do it because you don't need income, or the second type of category you said it's attracting, which is people that for whom um, it's all they've ever known and all they can ever do. I think, in essence, you might be onto something here. If I can just have you listen to uh, this chap from the Alliance, the Taxpayers' Alliance, uh, Duncan Simpson, and then I'll come back off this. Many high earners have already willfully given up more money uh, to join Parliament. Um, it's also the case that a lot of MPs are already on a salary which now is much larger than what they would have earned before being elected. So, in other words, what MPs earn before being elected isn't necessarily a marker of how good they'll be in the new job. But if MPs are apparently doing this out of a sense of public duty, then you know, the cash they earn should be a secondary objective. Now, there are people that will... As some, I think some of the professions you mentioned, there are people uh, who, for whom it would be a pay cut. I think you mentioned deputy, deputy head teachers. Head teachers right? uh, that's the kind of person I want to see and more of in Parliament. you want to see that kind of... Now, that, Rachel, your, your, um, there was a, a part of your point, actually, I think we reinforced Trevor's point, when you said that the inaccessibility financially makes it difficult for some people to join politics. Isn't that what Trevor's saying? I mean, I kind of... I heard that in, in his Trevor's uh, saying his pay them more, and actually, I think they, if you're in the top 5% of earners in this yeah. country, Probably the thing that's making it less accessible is not that you're paid less, that you're not paid enough. We do need to diversify it. There's all kinds of things standing in the way. You look at the life of, of an MP, you know, I mean, they get, they get dismissed a lot, but I think a lot of them are genuinely hard working people who care about their constituents and the country. But they you know, they're, the, the, the relation, the relate, excuse me, the rate of relationship breakdown is, hi is higher for parliamentarians. Um, the rate of he uh, mental health, health issues, yeah. long hours, they do tend inaccessible, to be, but they do often tend to be people who want to have a people. family they life as they, well. They tend to be either uh, aristocratic in the sense that they don't need money and they can just float and waft into Parliament, yeah. or they tend to be ideologues who are doing it because they are dogmatically, doggedly committed to certain causes. And that, I think, does skew the debate. But it's, so, first of all, I don't agree in terms of inaccessibility of politics. I think that anyone can make a decision to stand as an MP if that's what they choose to do. When it comes to the cost, and I know I'm taking you slightly off topic, so I do apologise, but when it comes to the cost, if one was to stand um, under a political party, most of those costs would be incurred by the political party, not by the individual. So I don't buy into this argument all the time. I know we're going to debate this later on, but I don't buy into this argument that we're restricting people from entering something if that's what they want to do. But to make it back to your central point, I guess it's what do you compare it to? Because politics is not a job, it's a life. And you're absolutely right. It, it really is going to impact on your relationships and your family. And if you're in the private sector, sector and you are deemed to be relatively successful, there is a strong chance you'll be earning a decent amount of money. And when you start to compare like for like with money, purely from the private sector going into this public sector, it becomes a very unattractive proposition. If you then go to your average household earner and say, you know, you're earning 29 grand a year, what is 80 grand in comparison to you? It's extraordinary, but I think it's a false comparison. Because oh. if someone wants to go into this field and is willing to make the sacrifices, willing to do that, then I do think they should be rewarded properly. And for what it's worth, I think that the MP's salary, in comparison to an yeah, average but, one, is... is no, but, no, 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 but the, 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 the best... The proper comparison here would be a, a general practitioner who can expect these days in this country to earn more than 100, £120,000 a year. If you're a general <clears throat> practitioner but you're interested in politics, do you think you'll do uh, as much for the community being a great doctor mm. at, tw you know, 50, 60% more than an MP, or do you want to give that up in order to be a backbench MP with very little influence. I mean, that's the point of the choice yeah. I'm making. We also the have... members of Parliament are not average people. We also have, as a, just as a factoid, we have the lowest paid... among the lowest paid Prime Minister in the world, you know, in terms of uh, what we pay our PM.